welcome back to the video lectures on image and speech processing techniques so uh, the, from the previous video lecture we have been talking about the speech processing techniques what is speech how is speech produced right so we have seen how is the um, what is speech then how is the speech produced in human bodies what are the organs that are playing a major part in speech processing so we have seen we have seen those points right so in today's uh, topic or today's video's lecture we will be discussing about the acoustic phonetics mm -hmm. so basically phonetics is the uh, rules of the language that are uh, classification of the sounds in the specific language the rules of the language that are uh, dependent are is the study is called as the linguistic whereas phonetics is the study of the classification of a sound classification of the speech sound in any language right so we'll be talking in terms of the english language which is the most common language right so we'll be talking about the acoustic phonetics so in english language basically we have 48 phonemes right so uh, each sound is called as the phoneme so in english language we have 48 phonemes and they can be classified into five classes Right. So we have those five classes are called as the vowels, diphthongs, vowel-like consonants, consonants, uh, syllabic sounds. Then we have glottal stop. So these are the different types of the acoustic phonetics that we are dealing with. Right. So these again, these all forty-eight phonemes can be divided into only thirty-eight sounds. Right. So we have forty-eight phonemes. Uh, existing in English language and these 48 synonyms can be classified into 38 sounds and they are, can, are represented using this diagram. So what do we have? We, these are the 48 phonemes which are represented by using 39 sounds. Right. So in those sounds we have the sounds to be uh, vowels, diphthongs, semi-vowels, consonants. Then the major classes are four, which is vowels, diphthongs, semi-vowels semi and consonants. Again, the consonants are further divided into nasal sounds, nasal consonants, nasal sounds, or we have stops, which can be termed as the voiced stop, unvoiced stops. Then we have fricatives. Again, this is divided into voiced fricatives, unvoiced fricatives. Then we have affricatives and whisper. Right? So these are the uh, 39 sounds. Uh, how are they classified? This is the phonemes classification that is existing for the English language. Now, again, these 39 sounds can be divided into uh, two, two types. All these 39 sounds can be classified into two types, where the first type is called as the continuant sound, where the vocal tract is changing with respect to, uh, it is not changing with respect to time. So, what does that mean is, if we have... A vocal tract at this point and a speech sound has been produced okay say suppose it is like vo a vowel sound is created okay a vowel sound is created so what happens is based on the pressure the area of the vocal tract is changing as well as the how a complete word is uh, spoken out or say suppose pa. so when you're saying a vowel sound or a, a sound say pa. so how is that in the speech time taken for the spelling of this per sound so how is this vocal tract changing so that is a study point that we are going to consider so if when you are trying to sp spell out a one syllable sound if at that time uh, at that complete time the vocal tract is not changing at all then we call it to be a continuant sound Whereas when it is changing with respect to those time, then we call it to be an non-continuant sound. Right? So the vocal tract will be changing with respect to time as well as the distance. Right? So the vocal tract, how does it behave at the starting point? How does it behave at the middle point? How does it behave at the end point? These are the three different points uh, where we can see that the vocal tract is changing or not. So this is called, uh, this is a very important parameter when we are, uh, we have to consider when we are trying to model the vocal tract. Right. So here we have a vocal tract. If as for some specific sounds, we are having the vocal tract changing with respect to sound, and for some sounds, it is not changing with time. Right. So this is an important classification that we have in the uh, acoustic phonetics. So basically, what does 
what did we study here till now is like we have acoustics acoustic phonetics phonetics is basically the study of the uh, sounds classification of the sounds that is existing in english language and here we have 48 phonemes and these 48 phonemes can be divided into 39 sounds then all these 39 sounds can be divided into two types whether they are continuous uh, continuous sounds or non continuous sounds Right. So let's discuss about what are the each sound represent. Right. So we have the first type is called as the vowels. These are the sounds with which are having the longest duration in any word or in any sentence. See, suppose I say that uh, this video lecture, this video uh, lecture is on. speech processing right say so suppose this is an example that we are going to consider this video lecture is on the speech processing so what are the vowels that are existing let me just erase them out okay so we have i here i here then we have e right so we have e here l e c t u right so let me just erase e here then we have u here r e right again we have i here which we are erasing then we have o which we are erasing then in speech we have two e's o t e, i right so what is happening here when we delete all those in a single statement we see that there are lot of characters or the lot of syllable sounds which are which are given for the vowels so these are the sounds which have the longest duration in any example or any sentence that we speak of and they also have very little linguistic information that means if in the statement let me just erase this out and take a very simpler uh, much more simpler uh, uh, example say suppose speech processing right so let me just erase my vowels here so here it goes e goes off and i goes off now from here if i say these two are two two words then from looking at this just the word just looking at this word i can uh, guess what is the actual word that is there in this so i can easily guess it to be a speech right so if i say consider the same example and i consider only the vowels present okay i have here and here so i am just removing the consonants that are existing in that example of my word so if i am removing them if i see here then it is very much difficult to understand what is the actual word if only the vowels are present whereas when we remove the vowels by just looking at the consonant i can understand what is the actual word so that is why we are saying that it has a very little linguistic information but they Contain the orthogonality of the sentence. What does that mean? Is if they are not present, then the sentence looks incomplete, right? So they have to be present so that we can clearly understand the whole sentence. So basically, they carry very little li linguistic information, but they have to be present for the understanding of the complete statement, right? Now, how are they actually produced in human body? so we we have to study how are the each sound is produced so that it is useful for us when we are trying to model the vocal tract right so we have when we are studying the vocal tract um, uh, modulation i mean like how is the sound being produced for vowels we understood that it is generated by the fixed vocal tract and the quasi periodic pulses of the air which are caused by the vibrations of the vocal cords right so what is happening here is when we are exciting a vocal tract which is a fixed vocal tract so that means that the vocal tract is not changing with respect to time so vowels is a continuant sound right it is a continuant sound which is fixed for a time period and the sound which is the vowel sound is created by 
vibrations of the vocal cords and they generate the quasi periodic pulses right so the vocal cords are produced by exciting a fixed vocal tract with quasi periodic pulses of the air which is caused by the vibrations of the vocal cords right now there is another important term on which we are going to study a lot which is called as the area function what do you mean by area function is it is the dependence of the cross sectional area of the vocal tract along the uh, distance uh, the vocal tract area how is it changing with respect to the distance so that dependency is called as the area function say suppose we have a vocal tract like this okay now and when we are speaking out any syllable so the vocal tract may turn it is a membrane so it can change it can take up any uh, shape so it can increase the area or it can decrease the area or we see that we have the trachea then we have the mouth cavity nasal cavity we have different tracts we see that the trachea is of one size the mouth cavity is differing from one person to another the nasal cavity will change from one person to another so as the time changes as well as the area when you are talking when the wave changes or starts from your glottis and it goes and comes out through your oral output the area where the air pressure goes on changing right so we have the trachea here then the mouth cavity so it is changing the area so that area dependence the cross sectional area of the vocal tract dependency on the distance is called as my area function now how is this area function dependent is the uh, for any particular vowel or any speech uh, sound is determined by the position of the tongue jaw lips and velum specifically when we are talking about the vowel sound the articulators or the uh, positions which we have to consider is the tongue jaw lips and velum okay so we have the four uh, vowel sounds a e uh, a e i u okay here so when we are considering the vowel sounds the uh, vocal tract configurations or the articulation positions can be given to be of this sort for each specific vowel sound right so if we consider this i so if we see here the i when we are spelling out i the sound i the tongue is touching or it is nearer to my upper palate whereas when we go for a or e those at those points the uh the distance between my upper palate and my tongue is uh bigger or larger than this uh when we are talking about i so this area difference yeah this area difference is called as the area function when we say a when we say a then the tongue is almost at the back palate it is touching my back upper palate when we say u when we are saying u the lips uh the shape is very narrow right and at the same time the tongue is touching in the almost uh, upper palate so if we see clearly here when we consider i and u the positions of the tongue are very uh, close to each other whereas when we see the position of my lips they are different so based on my tongue the jaw and lips different sounds can be produced right now what happens here is the articulators that means the uh, tongue jaw lips and velum they change with accent say suppose i am talking with an hindi accent i am talking in terms of my american accent or i am talking in german accent or indian accent right so when we talk these articulate positions they slightly differ from each other so it is a very uh, difficult for us to put those articulators positions to be one uh, parameter on based on which we decide the which sound is produced so instead of that for vowels we are going to differentiate them in terms of form and frequencies so the vowel sounds are going to be differentiated based on the form and frequency so what are those form and frequencies are as we have seen in my previous lecture uh, video we have seen that form and frequencies are basically the resonance frequencies resonance frequencies of the vocal tract 
right so the formand frequencies are basically the resonance frequencies of the vocal tract so based on this when we are trying to spell out any uh, sound based on this we have different formand frequencies those are going to be considered for studying the vowel sounds that has been produced so we are taken uh, many number of samples like by for both men and women we have considered and we have told them to speak out these vowels uh, and we have tried to plot the uh, formant first frequency versus the second frequency plot right so when we have tried to plot the second formant frequency versus the formant frequency for a wide range of frequencies we got a plot of this sort so what is happening here is or what do we observe from this graph is if i am trying to pronounce the uh, vowel sound i so all these speakers were able to generate a relation of uh, second versus the first in this uh, circular or the vowel shape uh shape here so we see that all the second and the formant uh, frequency first formant frequency relation all those points are inside this vowel shape circle then so on for i e a o u so all these vowel sounds are in the shape of a uh, vowel shape right so now this again it is difficult we have taken uh, many number of samples so it is difficult for us to look upon here so what did we do is we have taken the average average of all the first form and second form and frequencies that are exist in each circle and those points we have taken to consider here so what did we do is we have taken the average of the second form and versus the average of the first form and frequencies and we have tried to plot the graph this graph is called as the vowel triangle and it is in the shape of a triangle so that is why we are calling it to be the vowel triangle which is shown in this graph right so what is do we observe here is we have three vertices right so we have three vertices for the triangle and those we have assumed or that we have seen it to be the vertices are having the vowel sound i a u right now if you observe from here the first formant frequency is on my x axis and the second formant frequency is on my y axis from this uh, graph we observe that i which is at this point it has low first formant frequency but high second formant frequency right so when we go for the uh, vowel sound a it has the high formant frequency here right so and it has low formant frequency whereas u which is at the third vertex we observe that the formant frequencies the first and the second are almost uh, low they are almost the same and always and also they are very low so that is how we have drawn this uh, vowel triangle here right now we also observed that all other vowel sounds that are existing apart from these three are existing inside this uh, vowel triangle shape right so all these vowels which we have here they are all the vowel sounds which are existing inside my uh, vowel triangle right now when we have tried to plot in the frequency domain we have seen that uh, the graphs the spectrogram graphs are are of this sort and from this for different vowel sounds they, they are shown here right now we have also observed here that there is a, a horizontal dark horizontal voice bar which is existing between the 100 to 200 hertz this is specifically for vowel sounds what does how do we look at here is we observe here okay we just take this example here for this band of frequencies here we have a very thick line here right this is the very thick line that thick line which is existing between 100 to 200 hertz we are calling it to be the voice bar this voice bar is not specifically for saying that a uh, A speech has been created, or a form and frequency exists. This is basically generated due to the glottis excitation, which is called as the glottis pulse excitation. This is existing only for vowel sound. So when we see the uh, spectrogram, which is the frequency domain representation of the sounds for the vowel sounds, we have seen that a horizontal bar 
और हॉरिजोंटल वॉइस बार इज सीन एट दी हंड्रेड टू टू हंड्रेड हर्ट्स The next type of the speech sound is the uh, diphthongs. Diphthongs, right? So what are those? Is they are the monosyllabic speech sound. They are actually one syllabic speech sound, but they start near the articulation position of a first vowel and they move towards the position of the final vowel or the second vowel, right? So that is how we see we. Uh, Uh, feel that they are a combination of two vowel sounds like for example we have ear here we have e and a uh, both combination the, both the vowel sounds are combined and the single sound a monosyllable syllable sound is of uh, her like ear right so when we go for fear then we go for severe so all these are few examples then there are four actually four standard uh, diphthongs that are existing and those are like uh, a sound in b b sound in a right how which is how right then we have the uh, sound like boy so this voice sound boy so all these are starting from at one vowel sound articulation position and they move to the next vowel sound articulation positions so such sounds are called as the diphthongs and they are actually a one mono uh, syllabic sound right so when we are uh, trying to understand how are these diphthongs produced we have seen that they are produced by varying the vocal tract smoothly between the vowel configurations right so uh, as we said that we have two different vowel sounds and they combinedly combined as one vowel sound so the vocal tract will be a uh, when we are trying to produce a vowel sound it is a continuous sound so diphthongs are also a continuous sound but they are changing from time to time because we are changing from one vowel sound to another vowel sound so they become a non continuous sound so diphthongs are non continuous sound so we have the non continuous sound to be diphthongs now if we try to plot my uh, spectrogram for my diphthongs what did we see that since it is moving from one vowel sound to another we see a smooth gliding waveform in my spectrogram as shown here this is one diphthong example this is another example this is another example and here also we have a slight change so this is how a spectrogram uh, looks like for our uh, diphthongs so we have a gliding or decreasing behavior that is seen for connecting one formant frequency to the another formant which is the first vowel and my second vowel right so this are the two specific sounds which we have which is the vowels and diphthongs the rest of all the sounds can be uh, all the sounds can be divided into two distinct features they can be divided into two classes or they can be divided based on two distinctive features those are called as the place of the articulation and the manner of the articulation there are two distinctive features by which we are going to divide the rest of the sounds which have semi vowels consonant sounds all those we are going to divide it in based on two distinctive features so one is the first place of the articulation and the next is the manner of the articulation what is the place of articulation means it describes the point along the vocal tract where an obstacle is introduced right so when we are trying to create any sound a uh, vocal cords are vibrating based on that we are creating a sound or a obstruct for a free flowing air flow we are creating an obstacle so where is that obstacle being created based on that we are saying that place of the articulation based on this we are going to divide my speech sounds next we have the manner of articulation what is the mean by manner of articulation means they describe the characteristics of the excitational signal source or the articulation motion that is used to create the sound so what does it mean is 
what is the type of the excitation source that is used for creating that source or where is that created when uh, obstacle is placed there what kind of an excitation signal has been created so these distinctive features provide a good mechanism to express our understanding how a speech is generated in the vocal tract so this is an important parameter so to understand how is the speech generated better we have to study these two uh, distinctive features of the sound right so when we go for the uh, places of the articulation where we the sound can be generated or the places of uh, um, places where the obstacle can be introduced they can be divided into seven cases or seven places Okay, so we have the labial or bilabial, which is placed at. Sorry, we have labial and bilabial. Then we have labiodental. Then we have dental, alveolar, palatal, velar, and uh, pharyngeal. Right. So what happens here is, if we consider the labial or bilabial, it is at the at the lips so what do you mean by the construction of an obstacle is created by your lips those sounds are called as the labial bilabial sounds which are created by this obstacle at my lips whereas where if we go for my labiodental then the construct uh, the obstacle is created between my lips and the front of my teeth right so when we go for the dental the teeth create those obstacles whereas your alveolar the front of your pair uh, the front where you create it using your tongue so you when your tongue touches your upper front palate you create the obstacle so such sounds can be called as your alveolar then comes your palatal your tongue is touching your middle of your palate right next your velar that means a velar is velar is used means a velum is being introduced right based on the position of the velum uh, different sounds can be produced then it like pharyngeal means a whisper sound which is like h in like in word which right so at there uh, the h sound is very like in a whisper stage so those at those sounds are created at the pharyngeal so based on where the obstacle is created based on that we have different places there are seven cases which can be seen here also so we have the labial or bilabial then we have the labiodental then we have the dental alveolar palatal velar then we have the glottal at which or the pharyngeal stage right what are the manners of the articulation that are existing is the we have uh, glide nasal stop fricative voicing mixed to source or whisper so these are the man, uh, manner of articulation that are i mean uh, that means the how are the excitations uh, source existing how are they differing from one another to another so in glide we have a smooth motion of the articulators right so in nasal what we have the velum is closed it is lowered so based on that we have a different excitation signal when we are talking about the stop it is a total stopped i mean like totally constricted vocal tract so the vocal tract in vocal tract we have complete blocking of the air flow that is called as my stop that creates my excitation signal when we go for fricative what is happening is the vocal cords are not vibrating but a turbulent source is generated due to high degree of uh, obstacle in my vocal tract so if i have a vocal tract the sound is not created because of the vocal cords being vibrating they are not generated because of them so but they are created because at the other at other point of my vocal tract an obstacle is created based on which we get this sounds like f t s so these are the fricative sounds whereas you have the voicing sounds the there the vocal cords are vibrating throughout that whole sound so fricatives and voicings are most used used we have the next mixed to source what do you mean by mixed to sounds the vocal cords are vibrating but the turbulence produced at the construction uh, at the vocal tract will also play an important role in generating those sounds or these two act as my excitation sounds now what do you mean by the whispered sound or the whispered uh, excitation means only it is created by the turbulence of the air flow at the 
glottis. So it is not created by the vocal tract, it is not created by the um, vo vocal cords, nothing. The, there is an air source which is just creating a turbulence at your glottis or your so it is creating at, the, at your lungs. That a turbulence or the uh, noisy thing or the noisy sound is called as your whisper sound which is of the of H sound in your witch, right? So these are the distinctive features that are uh, existing in the places of your uh, uh, district places of your articulation and your manner of your articulations. So we this is just a uh, summary of the place and manner of your articulation for the five consonants of your English. So this gives you just example like where is your labial or where is the construction where it is being produced for a stop say suppose p and b it is a stop so we are tired, completely creating a construction or an obstacle at your labial which is at your lips that is why we are being able to create the sounds which is p and b whereas when we go for fricative sounds fricative sounds that means your vocal cords are not, uh, uh, vocal cords are not vibrating but a turbulence is created turbulence sound is created at your uh, obstacle place so at your labellum which is your lips we have created f f and v these are called as your weak uh, fricatives right these are weak fricatives when we go for nasal when we go for nasal means the velum is being a plain role which has been lowered because of which an excitation signal is created and those excitation signals are created at uh, are uh, generating the sound because there is a construction of the or obstacle at my lips which is the labial position so based on this we can this is only an example of the five consonants in the english so based on this how is the sound being generated we can have a clear understanding Okay. So, further we can have a clear understanding about the articulation positions, uh, what are the uh, distinctive features, place of your articulations. Further, in detail, you can obtain it from your textbook, which is the uh, Digital Processing of your Speech Processing by Rabinar. Right? Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.